Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm freaking out a little right now. It's here. It's finally here and I've read it. Here I was studying for the exams for college and working on other things when suddenly I hear the news that Chojin X is finally finished. Initially, I didn't pay much attention to it because I thought people meant that it should have finally finished draft he was comfortable with to soon release. What I didn't get was that no. In fact, the first chapter was done and ready to be read like Tuesday, I think. I'm really sorry, but I really can't contain my excitement. I'm just going to start the video at once. It's finally here, I can't believe it. So, Chojin X aka Superhuman X in English is the new manga series written and drawn exclusively to my understanding by the man, the legend himself, Sui Ishida, creator of one of my most well-beloved stories by the name of Tokyo. It's honestly surreal that for the very first time since 2018, I've actually read a brand new chapter from the author. As you know, this manga has been a long time coming and, at last, we finally are able to read its introduction. For free, nonetheless, in its full glory. First impressions? I loved it. I think I surprised no one by saying this, but I honestly really enjoyed this first chapter. Introductions are key into getting someone on board and interested in what the rest of the series has to offer. And contrary to popular belief, they're much harder to make and do well than people give authors credit for. But and I apologize in first hand for the comparison game, even though it's a no-brainer. I couldn't help but to notice while I was reading this chapter how much it should have evolved and improved as a storyteller in just putting both this and Tokyo Ghoul's first chapters side by side. The differences, even in the similarities, are clear as night and day. I still think Tokyo Ghoul's introduction is a strong one, considering how much more he should have had in store for his readers in subsequent years. But reading Superhuman Nexus, you're definitely reading a chapter paneled and structured by a true professional. The amount of information, world building, and character work that is put in this one chapter were all handled perfectly. The pacing was expertly well crafted. Again, I mentioned this. Even pros like Masashi Kishimoto, the author of Naruto, of course, in recent endeavors have struggled to make a cohesive first chapter that doesn't feel jarring or overwhelming. Writing an introduction for your story is hard. Writing a well-thought-out story is even harder. Ishida has also been a victim of this in various occasions throughout his Tokyo Ghoul run. He's not perfect. But despite his weaknesses, he's still a master at balancing tone and setting up interesting concepts, not to mention his clever but subtle foreshadowing. That first chapter of Tokyo Ghoul is, all things considered, a very solid one, but its structure is not flawless, which is why Ishida himself went back and improved upon certain areas. Specifically, his character work outside Kaneki himself as a protagonist, you really don't get as much with the supporting characters that are introduced. Of course, Rize is written to be more of a mysterious figure, and there's no room yet to properly introduce other prevalent characters, such as Toko or the manager. So, when I mention this, I'm mostly referring to Hide mainly the significance of Kaneki's relationship with him. You get a sense of Hide's personality and you do feel the friendship they share, but at the same time, as we find throughout the storyline, the bond they share is much bigger and more important than what it's presented in that one chapter. They're more than just friends, they're like brothers, and their friendship is the crux of Kaneki's own psychological endurance. In Superhuman X's first chapter, there's no room for error or any kind of misconception. These two main characters, Tokyo Kurohara and Azuma Higashi, are this story's beating heart, and their relation to one another is almost a brotherly one. There are distinct similarities to Tokyo Ghoul as expected. This new duo, as I just mentioned, are an obvious reminder of Ken and Hide, respectively. Chojins can be seen as this world's ghouls, despite the concept being fairly common in a plethora of other stories. Humans with special abilities, similar to superheroes and supervillains, are not uncommon. The elastic guy reminding me of Luffy's powers in One Piece, and the man who can incinerate individuals of characters like Dabi from My Hero Academia and Fire Force. Getting back to the symbolism, which of course is a common trait that you expect from the author by now. And then the lion commonly associated with the feeling of being free due to its paddles wandering off the air with no clear destination, in the place of a spider lily. And of course, the more cut and dry one, the roly-bollies metaphor. 
I was actually surprised considering the fact it should have took longer than usual to inject it in the story. For the most part, it didn't feel anything like its predecessor, and that's a good thing. I wanted to see what the mangaka could do beyond what came before, and experience a fairly distinct storyline altogether. So far it seems that's exactly what he's doing. Especially the very beginning, it reminded me a lot for the most part of Inu Asano's style in the veins of a dead dead demon's dead 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 destruction. Try to say that out loud three times fast. Although it seems that there's still room for more moments of darkness, considering how brutal the violence in certain set pieces of atmosphere resembled his signature trademark. Of course, I couldn't finish off without mentioning, even once, the artwork. Oh boy, the art. Experience and time do make a difference, not to mention the paneling. It's just a gorgeous chapter to look at, honestly. Not many panels outside the intro and last pages that show off in full his prowess, but on a technical aspect, Ishida shows a level of consistency throughout the entire framing and layout of each page masterfully. That's one other aspect that I was really happy to find out about. Instead of a monthly release schedule of chapters in the same veins as he did with Tokyo Ghoul, Ishida has total creative freedom now. That's super awesome. This means he will put out new chapters whenever he feels comfortable, and if you ask me, I think it's a genius move. Not only will he have less constraint to follow a deadline, we'll most likely get the same level of consistent quality we've gotten so far, and I couldn't ask for anything better. Yes, depending on the circumstances, we might have to wait longer for certain chapters to release, and in the worst case scenario, have another Berserk, Vagabond, Hunter x Hunter, Iata situation in the future, but I'm confident that Ishida will deliver, and best of all, he will do it on his own terms, fully committed and passionate once again with his work. In conclusion, I really enjoyed reading this chapter. I enjoyed the setting, the new concepts he's working on, the lighter tone with shades of dark, the balance of humor and action, the beautiful artwork, the aesthetically pleasing panel layout, our new main character, specifically Tokyo, and his personality and potential. It's exciting to see Suyashida highlight another protagonist who is just a normal person who's thrust into extraordinary situations just like Kaneki. Definitely recommend, if you haven't read it already, that is. You can find Superhuman X's first chapter online for free on Shueisha's Manga Plus site or app. And for now, that's all. Thank you all for watching, and definitely expect more reviews whenever a new chapter releases. Please stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next one.